Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be looking at a new paint range by YouTube artist Alpe. He has created a modern day portrait set of oil paints. I've had this box sitting here for a little while and I cannot wait to actually put these to use and see how beautiful these colors are. And I'm gonna look at the first paint first. The white paint, it is actually made of safflower oil. Most oil paints are traditionally made of linseed oil or the ones I have bought personally. So this is a little bit of a different kind of paint. There is a second reason I wanted to actually look at these paints and that made me excited. It was the inclusion of transparent red oxide. Most paint sets will have burnt sienna, like that is a default color that most artists have. Every artist has burnt sienna, but Alpe, he's thought of something a little bit different. He's gone for the red oxide, which is a warmer color. And I've got to see how it works. I can't wait to see how it works in an actual portrait. It's going to be a lot of fun. From my quick swatches, I noticed something really interesting with the actual paints. They actually look dry, so I touched it, and surprisingly, I only got a tiny little bit of the black transfer at my finger. This is like, what the heck? These are oil paints. Why is it doing that? But it seems to be a combination of the actual paper and how thinly I actually spread them out with the actual paintbrush. I kind of knew then that these paints were a little bit special, and I was really interested to see how they would handle that actual painting. So. I'm starting with two classic paintings. Firstly is the Mona Lisa, and she is on an 8x10 canvas. I'll be doing a second 8x10 canvas after this, and I just want to point out that I've picked the colors from the Mona Lisa from the reference photo above. This was, I think, way one of Leonardo's apprentices, and it was painted around the same time, but it doesn't have the yellowing of the varnish, so you get the actual beautiful skin tone and none of the yellowing and greeny colors. I really want the Mona Lisa to be what she's meant to be but well on a very 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 miniature scale of eight by ten centimeters all i ever hear people talk about the mona lisa is how small she is in real life and i'm like hold my beer i'm going to make her tiny she is so small that when i looked at her hands they're about the size of my thumbnail now i have big hands because i'm like 5 11 and my hands are ginormous like my fingers are really long but but the details of her hands and her face are just really small when they're the size of a fingernail. Yeah, this is still a small canvas. I have never painted something so tiny and I've also never painted something with such incredible detail as a portrait or anything like that. I am actually not the greatest with detail, but I found I had these beautiful new brushes that I bought a few months ago. I had a disaster when I was doing a different video and I was doing some oil painting. I could not get the small details because all of my smaller, thinner liner brushes kind of were just too chunky and they had too much paint and they were dry and they just were dreadful. So I bought these new Nerf brushes and oh wow, they, boy did they actually do a beautiful job because I was able to get these really small details on her face and look it looks like a face you can see her eyes and her nose and her mouth and I was impressed with it and I absolutely love how her hands look because most artists will tell you they absolutely hate drawing hands I'm totally different I love doing hands hands are like fun for me I don't know why I think it's because I've just painted my own hands because when you're just like trying to draw in a sketch before just a random sketch, I had my hands in front of me. They're a reference thing that they're a reference that has been always there for me. I've always had a free reference of my own hands. So I've been able to paint it or draw it or whatever for the longest time. So I love how she turns out. I love the colors. I think it's actually really fun. It is tiny, but I absolutely love this piece. I think I did a lot of justice to it. Like the background, I wasn't too fussed about getting the details right, but I got the beautiful vibrance of her clothing. I got her robe. You can see the different layers of her clothing. And I think I kind of nailed it considering how small it was. And I have to thank these beautiful paints. They were just wonderful for this piece. Onto the second miniature, Whistler's Mother. Now, this is not a piece I am as familiar with. I had actually done this background color like two years ago. Both of these were mini canvases I wanted to paint a long time ago. I just never finished them. I had sketched out the Mona Lisa. I had started doing some under colors for this one. I think I'd stopped. It was really wet paint at the time. And I had some issues at the time. And actually today when I did this, when I redid this with the actual proportions because the painting itself, the original, is a little bit more square and I was trying to not make the curtain too big because the original is not too big but then if I did that too skinny, her body was too long and yeah it wasn't looking good so I kind of just had to make do with the actual size and I didn't put a lot of effort into it. I just really 
went very loose with this one. It just had a little bit of a play. It was kind of, I don't know, just something a little bit different. And I just wanted to have more fun and yeah, see how it goes. From these two test pieces, I have to say the Mona Lisa was definitely my favorite. This one was just a little bit boring, but I was just using up some paint and I already had this mini canvas there. So I thought I may as well paint it. And I just wanted to have a couple of different attempts with these paints to see different things what I could do. And this one's a lot darker. It's just different. It's got a different emotion to it. So I just used up my paint and just played with it. And here it is. Starting the main face now, which is where I'm really going to test out these paints and actually get beautiful skin tones, well, hopefully, is this self-portrait. I mentioned before, I'm not really a experienced portrait painter. I've only ever done one self-portrait in the past. It was about two, three years ago. I was just using white and paints gray. I probably took me about an hour or two. It was wet on wet, and I had a lot of fun with it. And I think I did okay. I'm going to start by mixing three different skin tones, a light, medium, and a dark. I've got very, very light Irish skin, so I need those, you know, those very whitish caramelly colors. I was using a lot of the titanium white and the yellow ochre, and I took a little bit of the permanent red violet. I absolutely love that permanent red violet, but it is a dictator. You only need the smallest amount of paint Otherwise, everything is going to be a really strong red. It did allow me to have these beautiful, nice, warm tones. I probably should have used the Cadmium Red Deep color a bit more. I didn't really use that at all throughout this whole process because I was completely obsessed in that permanent red violet. It's so beautiful. I have this belief that if you want to become a better portrait artist, draw or paint self-portraits you've seen your face a million times in the mirror you know your face better than any other face you just look at it constantly you know every freckle you know every birthmark you know every scar you know the shape of your nose your eyes your smile you know all those little details that other people may not notice in you if if I was to choose to review these paints and I just picked a random photo from the internet I might do a good job. I might do an okay job. I don't know. I could do a fantastic job. Well, maybe not, but I wouldn't. I could miss things, those little details, the way that their smile kind of picks up at the corner or the eye shape, those little tiny details I wouldn't necessarily get by staring at their face for two hours. I've stared at my own face for many more hours than that. So it's the perfect way to learn. If I do a bad job and I get something completely wrong and I completely screw up something on my own face, I am going to fix it. I'm going to see it immediately and I'm going to learn from it. So for me, it is completely the best way to learn. Getting back to the actual paints, I found that they went down beautifully. I found that if I wanted to blend colors, I was able to get these really nice, beautiful blends. The only thing I did struggle with was the shadows on this side of the face that I'm painting here. That is more a skilled issue from my part. I am not experienced with skin tones and I'm definitely not experienced in mixing shadows of skin tones. I was finding that if I put too much black in, they would look a little bit too gray and not alive. And I wanted to add a little bit of warmth. So it's all about trying to get that mix right. I think I do okay by the time this painting is done and I'm pretty happy with what I did achieve. These are also the first professional set of paints I've ever used. I have used a lot of student grade oil paints and I have student grade paints. I've got many of them and I do love those. I have used the cheap oil paint sets that you get from a discount store. I absolutely hate those. I, when I was starting out, they were fun. They were, they got me started and I enjoyed them. They had a nice mix of colors, but the moment you try something a bit better, you realize that they, they are kind of not that great, or at least the ones I had. I don't mind the student grade paint, but these professional paints were just perfection. Look, I'm not about to go buy 
all of these professional paints. I have a whole stack of student grade paints and the student grade paints are perfect for my skill level. I'm someone that's learning a lot. Having this experience with these paints, I am so happy with how they work and how much fun they are to paint with. I enjoy this so much. Even the miniature paintings when I did the little Mona Lisa, like I just got these colors that were just intense and warm and they got everything that I wanted to achieve, I could achieve with these paints. There was no fighting with these paints. They just work the way you want them to work. They have such vibrant colors and for a non-portrait artist, I actually did an okay job. I think one of the advantages to this Alpe set is he is a professional portrait painter. He has chosen these colors specifically. So you don't have to fiddle around with a website going, oh, what colors do I need? You can kind of just trust his judgment. You can watch his videos and see what he paints and then go, I want to do that. And that's what I did. So I would not have picked these colors by themselves, but together they make for a beautiful painting. We have reached the end of this video and here are the final reveals, the three paintings, the Mona Lisa, Whistler's mother, and of course the self-portrait where I really got to showcase how stunning these paints actually are. As I've already mentioned, I am not a portrait painter. I have very little experience, but these paints actually made me look okay. If you like this content, don't forget to hit the like button, leave me a comment or subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I'll see you next time. Bye.